So I'm going to be 50 this month and I've been catching myself sounding like an old man. Everything is so expensive anymore. You've probably been saying that too. I know I have, I have been for quite a while talking to the missus. We just can't get over the cost of everything. And so that got me thinking about is right now as bad as say 2008 when the United States went through the Great Recession. Now I was working in the financial industry at that time and I remember feeling like 2008 was really really bad. As a matter of fact, the financial institution I was working at made car loans as part of their business model. And we were having people show up and leave their car in the parking lot and just turn it back over to us because things had gotten so bad. So many people were laid off and they really just couldn't afford to, to pay the bills. And so I'm seeing more and more posts on social media about how tough things are right now. And that really got me thinking, is it as bad right now as it is in 2008. And here's the spoiler for you. It's not anywhere near like 2008. And I'm going to share some data points with you and convince you of why that's the case. Now, that doesn't mean before we get to those data points, that does not mean that you're not feeling the squeeze. I'm feeling the squeeze. It feels like you can't go. Here comes my old man moment. It feels like you can't go to the grocery store and come out with more than two or three bags. And it's a couple of hundred dollars. Look at the cost of housing. So just recently, I was engaging on Twitter with some folks and a guy named Mark Palmer posted, for those willing, what is your home size and monthly payment? We have a four bedroom house and a $1,900 mortgage. Now, if you stop and think about that, depending on where you live, $1,900 is pretty affordable, which tells me that he probably got that mortgage years ago when mortgage rates were really low. There's a lot of people that are in the same shoes as Mark. Where My household is one of those. Our mortgage rate today that we got 11 years ago in this house is less than half of what mortgage rates are today. And so we have a beautiful home that doesn't cost us anywhere near what it would take if we wanted to rent something. And let alone to go out and buy something new, we would get a house about the same size, about the same finishes, and we'd be paying a lot more money. And I am sure I am not the only one experiencing that. Clearly, Mark Palmer on Twitter is experiencing it, and I bet you are too. Then I saw another post on LinkedIn where a gentleman was sharing more housing data points. And I've not been able to confirm these, but I just want to share what he was saying and see uh, how it hits you. The cost of buying a home in the United States rose to $27.50 on average per month, the second highest ever recorded. This is according to a company called uh, Aventure, I think is what that reads. Prior to the pandemic in 2022, the average home in the U.S. would cost $1,400 a month. So we've had a 100% increase in what is that? Just a couple of years. Just a couple of years from 2020 to 2024, we've seen a 100% increase in the cost of housing. And so, again, I'm sure we're not the only ones that are feeling this. You're probably feeling this, too. So the more and more I started to think about this, my old man syndrome about how expensive groceries are and housing and how out of control of it is. I started to think about this idea is, is this as bad as 2008? And again, the spoiler is it's not. So let me share, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven data points with you that I pulled from all credible sources. A lot of these are coming from the, Econo the Bureau of Labor uh, lots of uh, federal economics data, that type of thing. So as, let's just say, about as truthful as you can get in terms of economic data. And so I'm going to share them with you. So the first one I pulled is, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sharing 2008 versus uh, 2024. So the Q1, quarter one of 2008, right when the Great Recession had started. Technically, it started in December of 2007, but it really ramped into gear the first quarter of 2008. We're going to compare that flash forward 16 years and look at a comparison of where we are today after all the economic stimulus, $7,000 pumped into the market, which is a large reason we're seeing prices drive so crazy. Inflation at one point, uh, I guess it was about a year ago, hit 9%. Let's compare these 16 years apart and see really where we are. So GDP or gross domestic product, so basically, if you think about your income and your money that you have to work with, GDP is the same thing for the United States. It's the amount of really revenue that is produced in the company. So in Q1 of 2008, uh, it was sitting at 0.6%. In 2024, Q1, 1.6%. So the winner is 2024. So we're doing better now than we were at the time of the Great Recession. Okay. 
average household income. Uh, average household income in 2008 was a little bit over $50,000, $50,303. Right now it's $77,283. And I'm going to come back to that idea. Fed funds rate. So the Fed uh, meets on a regular basis. They're the ones that set the rates that financial institutions borrow from them on. And therefore that drives the rates that you pay for car loans and house loans and everything else. And so the Fed funds rate, the upper end, by the way, the Fed funds rate is always a small range. So we're talking about that. I'm comparing the upper end of that range. The Fed's fund rate in Q1 2008 was 4.25. Right now it is 5.5. So uh, Fed funds rate is higher now. It's definitely higher now. Rate of inflation. Uh, rate of inflation 2008, 4.2%. Right now, right now, 3.5%. Now, I know it was 8 and 9%. It got out of all control. That's part of the reason we are where we are. But as it stands today, it's at 3.5%. So it's lower than where things were in the Great Recession. The unemployment rate in the Great Recession was 5.1%. We're at 3.8 right now. So again, we're doing better than we think. Uh, I'm going to skip this next one and come back to it because it's really the main point. Consumer confidence. So it, there's a gauge that measures the confidence of people just like you and I and how we feel about the economy. And the highest, higher the score, the better. And consumer confidence in 2008 was at 97.76. It was pretty high. Right now, it's only 7.9%. So in a vacuum, these numbers that I shared with you, they're not perfect, but they do tell a story. And if you want to think about it, here's what I think I'm seeing or hearing. About a year ago, I wrote a blog article on my website, and I talked about the fact that I think that wage growth, the amount that incomes have grown, is really is one of the main factors that was keeping us out of a recession at the time. And I think that wage growth is a large portion of why we've not seen the U.S. economy take a further dive. Yes, things are more expensive. They're a lot more expensive. But I am seeing and hearing anecdotal evidence of people who are getting decent pay raises when they change jobs. They're getting decent pay raises in their current job. Wage growth is climbing. Now, it's not climbing at the rate of inflation. That's not what I'm saying. But it is climbing. And that is helping, helping to offset all these additional costs, okay? So what, what I think the point is, is I had this perception that right now is really tough, uh, that things are ludicrously exp expensive, that the U.S. economy is absolutely out of control and that people are out of their mind paying million dollars for a house, roughly the size of mine that I paid a third of that for 10 years ago. Now, is any of that true? or not true. It's true. Things are expensive. It's not just me being turning 50 and turning into an old man. Things are crazy expensive. But I think when you stop and look at things in this light, again, it's not a perfect comparison, but it does tell a story that things right now aren't as bad statistically in general across seven different factors. Five, I think as a quick glance, about five of them were doing better now than we were back then. We are doing better than when we were ramping into the Great Recession. There's one more caveat I'm going to put on that. There's a reason that the consumer confidence rating is so low right now. It's because I'm not alone. People are feeling just like me. We're all feeling the impact. Uh, we're trying to get smarter about how we spend our money here in this house. And we have a comfortable living, but we're still being very smart about where we spend our money. So what I want to do is caution you is that don't get wrapped up in this idea that things are really, really bad. Don't turn it into things are terrible. Relatively speaking, compared to other times when the economy wasn't doing so hot, we're doing pretty good right now. It does look like if we're not careful that things could get worse going into next year. A lot of economists think that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a tough year. I agree with that sentiment. So I'm not saying things are perfect. I'm just saying it's not as bad as we all think it is. With that, what I want to leave you with is this is the time to get your money in order. This is the time to be smart about where you spend your money. It doesn't make sense for you to run out and buy a new car at 7 or 8% interest when the car that you have right now, as long as it's a nice car and it's running and treating you well, is maybe at 3%. If you're going to move, 
The thing to think about moving is, are rates going to come down anytime soon? Probably not. So I'm not going to be like everyone, like others and tell you that you shouldn't move, that you should just sit on your house for the next 10, 12 years or however long it takes for rates to come back down. What I am going to tell you is that rates probably won't come back down to where they used to be for a very, very long time. We won't be in what was called ZERP or a zero interest rate environment for a very, very long time. That's zero interest rate that the Fed charges, not, not lenders. So be very intelligent with where you spend your money. Have a plan for your money. I've got a mentor. He always says, plan beats no plan. You need a plan for your money. And so to that point, if I can help you with that, in 2023, I helped people build over a thousand financial plans to help figure out where they were with the money, to build a budget, to plan for retirement, to figure out how to protect their assets in the best way, how much insurance they needed. All of these things, I do this completely free, no cost to you whatsoever. If that sounds interesting, reach out. Send me a DM, send me a comment in the in the video, and I will point you toward resources where you can get some help. So summary again, things are not as bad as they were, but they aren't perfect. <laughs>